Are you listening? You putting the hair gel on in the mirror. Just pay attention. Stay in and listen to Gay and Lesbian London on 94.9 FM. It's only on between 9 and 10. The pubs are open till all hours. Just relax, will you? Unwind. You look gorgeous. When did lesbianism come to the archers? When was the first same-sex kiss on television? How many lovers did Stephen Carrington have on Dynasty? Well, I wasn't one of them, I know that much. Um, the answer to this and a thousand other questions can be found in Broadcasting It, an encyclopedia of homosexuality on film, radio and TV in the United Kingdom from 1923 to 1993. Now, the book's compiler, Keith Howes, will be presenting The Swinging Fifties, a crackerjack evening of nostalgia, paranoia and gay fun as part of the London Lesbian and Gay Film Festival on Saturday. And he's here with us this evening. Hello, Keith. Hello, Matthew and happy birthday. I'm Thank really you. thrilled to be here on this special <laughs> night. Now this book is enormous. It's 960 pages. How long did it take you to compile? It took me from 1979 until uh, July 1993 to actually compile it, write it, finish it, send it in. So it's a 15-year project. And Keith. I loved every minute of it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm lying. <laughs> Why? Why? Because I felt that television and radio were enormously important. They'd sustained me and angered me throughout my life, and there wasn't a book. And I felt if I was going to read such a book, I'd have to write the thing, and I ended up doing that. How did you select what to put in and what to leave out? It tended to select itself, Matthew, because I was... It's called broadcasting it, and the word broad is uh, absolutely important in my in my world, because... I don't define homosexuality as, uh, you know, just uh, uh, gay and, and lesbian. I, I've defined it really as being non-heterosexual. So if you're not 100% heterosexual, you may find something for you in, in this book. And even if you are 100% uh, heterosexual, I still think you'd enjoy it. So stuff came to me, and as I started connecting the dots, more and more and more stuff came, and which is why it's over 900 pages long, and there's still more stuff that could go in. It must be like the labours of Sisyphus, because it can just keep on going, can't it? You could just never finish it. Sis Sisyphus. Sis who was, it, was his name? Yes. Sisyphus. Yes. Sisyphus. <laughs> 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 yes, you could do. So I was very grateful to Cassell when they said, we'll publish it. And uh, they said, no, we're not going to put any more stuff in. They said, the door is shutting on such and such a date and the book's going to be published before Christmas. And you'll just have to sit and suffer with all those wonderful programs that are coming out now that I was unable to put in, but we'll go into the next edition. And I really rely on people out there to tell me when they see or hear something that they think is relevant. Because there are lots of things that I haven't included because I didn't think it was relevant, but that doesn't mean to say that it isn't. It amazes me that you managed to do it, given that you've been living out in Australia as well. Mm, that was a problem. How did you keep your eye on <laughs> what's going on in broadcasting terms over here? Australia is very good to live in for all sorts of reasons, the weather, the freedom, but it's also very good from a television point of view because we have five channels, one of which is sort of like Channel 4, the other is like BBC, and they have many, many British programmes. And so I was able, in the main, to see most of the big drama productions and EastEnders and all the things that I really needed to see. And then my dear sister, she managed to give me the, uh, a lot of the radio material, send it to me, and also a lot of the television material that didn't get to Australia. So in a kind of cut-and-paste way, we managed to do it, but it was difficult. The familial love for you, though. Oh, isn't it? I can't tell you. I owe her so much because she's not gay, and uh, she did it for love. Yes. And the format is—I mean—it's rather like a traditional encyclopedia, and it goes from A to Z. Because I started at A, and Dixie started at Z, and we kind of <laughs> met at about L or K. Um, but you, as well as mentioning sort of films by titles and actors, you kind of pick on themes as well. And then give your own comment on something. Yes, yeah, so, uh, there are themes in there such as, um, well, aspects of, of things, aspects of sexuality, um, also symbols and signs for gays and lesbians, because in many parts of the history, of course, you couldn't say even say the word in, in the early 50s, which I'll be doing in my talk at the NFT next Saturday. You literally could not say the word homosexual or homosexual. It was banned. It was literally banned. So you had to think of other ways to do it and so you would use um, certain euphemisms or you would use um, dress codes 
for lesbians, or you would use um, little hints. Here names, and there. I like the names. Names, that of course. Out. Yes, I mean, if uh, lots of Adrians listening to this program, well, you, I think you'll find this book very interesting. <laughs> and if you're called Agatha, uh, I think you'd also find it interesting too. Yeah, names recur: Cedric and Clarence and Claude and um, Bobby. Bobby is a big, big gay name. Yes. There was one thing that particularly caught my eye, which was um, the entry for the BBC Pronunciation Unit in 1963. Homosexual was the subject of a memo, or a memo as I mispronounce it, and um, they, the BBC decided that homosexual should be pronounced Homer as in homage and not Homer as in Homer. Mm. Isn't, isn't it good that we've got the BBC to set these standards? And we ignore them and say gay. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us about the talk at the, um, at the NFT next week. Does that kind of put on a visual front, the, the book? You yes, can... it does, because uh, I course was not able to include actual television programs in there because uh, everything is, is written in a in a static print way but this is a, a wonderful opportunity for people to see to really go in a time machine back to the early 1950s and to see some of the earliest lesbians and gays on television real ones and fictional ones so we've got Dixon of Dyke Green <laughs> we've got the mighty warrior that had a penchant for drop earrings we've got um, the sapphic scientist who gave birth to Julie Christie is it all the good things or are there some nasty things oh as well? some nasty things as well but um, I think you have to accept that there's going to be a lot of negative material because, after all, in those days it was a criminal offence for, for men. But I, I think that you'll find a lot of fun, a lot of music, and a lot of audience participation. And we're going back, of course, to those wonderful days of traditional family values and uh, back to basics, and also those wonderful days before Doris Day was a virgin, <laughs> when Liz Taylor had only married two men, when Rock Hudson was the Baron of Beefcake, <laughs> and when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me, oh, my, you're still young, Keith, you're still young. Now, I guess our, um, the latest furore about the kiss on Brookside is a bit too late, a bit too recent to have snuck between the covers of your manual. Yes, un unfortunately I, 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 I so desperately want to um, just sit and scribble in each copy of broadcasting it before it's said because I want to say, well actually I, I did forget uh, Bro uh, Brookside and I uh, did forget Hufty and, uh, but in fact they were too late for, for inclusion. But kisses of course have caused such controversy over the years. They're such a, a, a physical declaration of our love, aren't they? They're, they're, they're saying that we have feelings, we have uh, deep feelings, or maybe just um, frivolous feelings, but that they are the same as heterosexuals. And of course, this is not acceptable. It's not acceptable in Australia when a TV series, an American one called Picket Fences, included two teenage girls kissing. And what did Australian television do? they banned the entire episode so the audiences would not have to see two girls kissing. And similarly with Brookside, the Saturday edition, I am told, had the insert of a man playing snooker when the two women kissed. So you could see the kiss on Wednesday night, but you couldn't see the kiss on Saturday afternoon because you saw a man playing snooker instead. In America, we've had the kiss in Roseanne between... Um, Roseanne and Marielle Hemingway from Personal Best and that caused an immediate outcry and all the advertisers withdraw, redo their advertising but the show went ahead. So kisses mean homosexuality, it means you cannot ignore it, it is there and television slowly, slowly, slowly is making the kiss more acceptable, it's desensitizing people and I couldn't uh, wish for a better symbol of our difference, which is really our sameness, isn't it? Are there going to be any kisses at uh, the Swinging 50s next Saturday? Well, I should be kissing anyone that comes along <laughs> and donating the proceeds <laughs> to some charity. Yes, we're going to see um, an interesting embrace between um, a, a very popular character's daughter and her best friend, who happened to be a un an unmarried policewoman who was based on a lesbian policewoman. We're not going to unfortunately see a kiss which I've just recently uncovered from a 1953 play which had two men kissing on the cheeks, face, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, from a distance. But it still was a kiss and one day I hope to show that.
Now, as I indeed I hope to show many other things in the future. <laughs> now the swinging, swinging 50s, that's next Saturday at the National Film Theatre. At 6.30. Number one. Sadly, Dixie and I won't be there because oh. we'll be here in studio. But we have got a ticket offer, offer for, for listeners to gay and lesbian London. The first three people to go to the box office at the National Film Theatre, which opens at 11.30 tomorrow morning, quoting the magic words GLR, will get a free pair of tickets for the Swinging 50s. And we've also, thanks to Cassell's, got two copies of Broadcasting It, which I highly recommend. And Keith, you're going to set our listeners a question. Yes, I think I'm going to take a, a very recent example of Broadcasting It and ask you to name the lesbian lovers in Brookside. So who it's are tough the two one. lesbian lovers on Brookside? From, from that infamous embrace. I think the first names will do. Is oh, that first That'll names? do, yes, yes. yes. So drop your answer on a postcard to Gay and Lesbian London, BBC GLR, PO Box 94.9, London W1A 4LG. The first two correct answers will get two copies of Broadcasting It. Keith House, thanks very much. This is specially for you. This is Doris Day.